What you mean you don't know Panda? She's dope. What you mean? What you mean? What you mean? What you mean? What is poppy YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Dope Ass Panda, and today I am bringing you guys the best beginner butterfly lock tutorial. If you haven't already seen my first butterfly lock video, I'm gonna go ahead and link it in the top right section. But that video was sponsored by Leave In Hair, and today. I am doing another collab with them, so I'm super excited. I'm gonna be showing you guys three different techniques that you guys can use to achieve butterfly locks. So today I am styling on a mannequin head, which I know is different, but if you guys haven't already, I told you guys at the beginning of quarantine to copy guys a doll head to practice techniques. So if you haven't done that by now, then you don't listen, but it's not too late. I will make sure that I link this doll head that I'm using down in the description section. The texture of this doll is great and awesome. So yes, it's great to practice these techniques on. So I am going to be showing you guys three different locks, like I said in the beginning. And you guys will notice that I am going to be prepping my second one in a different way. So this first one, I'm going to be doing a regular plait, just braiding my client's hair from top to bottom. My second one is actually going to be a twist. And the reason why I do this is because for those of you guys who have to take these down yourselves, I know it is super frustrating taking down a head full of braids, especially when you have 4C hair texture. So a couple of my clients have requested that I um, braid at the root and just twist all the way down. And this just allows for an easier takedown for a lot of clients. So this is definitely a great alternative to just doing a braid all the way down. Really, it only matters if it's super tight at the root. So that's why I started with the braid. The only reason why I wouldn't um, do a full twist on my client is just for a fear of the crochet being a little too loose at the root. So you always wanna make sure you start that with the braid. So these are the locks that were sent to me by Leave-In Hair. They are 18 inches and very similar to the Bobby Boss New Locks hair, which is extremely hard to get. So I definitely, definitely highly recommend purchasing from this brand. As always, I will leave the links in the description section where you guys can purchase this hair and I will also pin it at the top of the comments. In addition to this, they sent me Passion Twist hair, which I had used in my first video where I created butterfly locks. So I'm going to be using that in this video as well so you're gonna start by finding the loop at the top of the lock and I'm going to use that to crochet this lock into my clients natural hair so after I push my needle through I'm gonna put that loop through the hook and close it and then I'm going to pull that through Next, I'm going to take the end of that faux lock and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to crochet that through the top of the loop and pull it all the way through and that will make sure that your lock is secure. You can save a bunch of time by not crocheting your braid through the middle of the lock, which is what I have done in my previous faux lock tutorials. But I realized like it just takes too much time and it's not necessary if you're doing a distressed or a butterfly lock. So next I'm going to take two pieces of the passion twist hair and I'm going to start by fluffing them out. And the way you do that is by running your fingers down the entire lock that will fluff it and then it'll make it easier for you to pull them apart. Next, I'm gonna split each of those pieces into two and you just wanna carefully pull them apart. You wanna make sure that you're not creating any knots or tangling if you pull too hard and too fast. So I'm gonna slowly take my time and pull those apart. You should end up with four pieces of passion twist hair. So I'm gonna take two of those pieces and crochet them through the top. One side is gonna be significantly longer than the other. You're gonna take that shorter side and combine it with the lock and the braid. The longer side is gonna be the piece that you use to wrap around. So you're gonna begin wrapping at the root. You want this to be fairly tight. This is gonna help keep that hair secure at the root. The rest of the wrapping for these locks don't need to be done extremely tight, but you do wanna make sure that this hair is secure at that root. So you're gonna go around three to four times and make this nice and tight. Once you have that piece on there nice and secure, you can begin to wrap down and we're going to be using what is called the thumb method where you're going to take your thumb and you're going to weave out a little piece of the hair to create a loop. So you guys can see I'm almost in the middle of the hair and then I'm going to take this long piece and I'm going to wrap it over the top while I'm holding that hair 
in my thumb. You wanna do this about two times over the top because if not, you can see here that it's really easy to, to lose that loop when you're wrapping. So you're gonna stick your thumb in the middle. I'm gonna wrap two times over the top to make sure that my loop is secure and that it's gonna stay. And then you can move your thumb and continue wrapping underneath that loop. Now you're just gonna continue doing this all the way down. How many loops you wanna add in there is totally up to you. If you want a super messy look, then you would do the loops more often. If not, then you can do them more spread out, spread apart, but you're just gonna continue to do this until you're almost out of this passion twist hair. And like I said, this wrapping doesn't need to be super tight and super overlapped or anything because we are doing sort of like a messy distressed look and you still have that faux lock underneath. So you're just gonna continue wrapping and continue you doing that thumb method until you're almost out of hair. So when you get down to your last three to four inches of passion twist hair, that's when you know it's time to add in your second piece. So in order to do that, you're gonna grab your second piece and again, one side is going to be longer than the other. The short side, you are going to add in to your faux lock and your braid again. And then the longer side, you're actually going to either clip up or just wrap it around the top of your client's ponytail or whatever, so that way it's out of your way. You're then gonna take that hair that you were initially wrapping around and you are going to start to wrap it around again about three to four times and that's gonna help to secure that new piece of hair on. Once you do that, you're going to tie it in a knot. So in order to do that, you're gonna wrap it around and tie it around itself and pull it and then begin to wrap that piece up where it will meet that new piece of long passion hair that you added in. Once it meets where that long piece starts, I'm gonna grab that long piece and just begin to wrap that down together and it will be nice and secure. Once you've added that piece in, you can continue to do your thumb method and move all the way down until you get to the end of your lock. Once you get to the end of your lock, you're going to go ahead and tie another knot with the passion to his hair and begin to wrap upward. Once you run out of hair, you're just gonna do a nice palm roll and your lock is done. I will show you guys on another lock how you can better secure the ends of your lock if you are um, nervous about it not being secure enough with just the palm rolling, but I've been doing this for a while and it really doesn't unravel, especially having that knot. And that is how you create your first method for butterfly locks. For our second method, we are going to be prepping all of the hair the same way. However, instead of using two pieces of passion twist hair, we're actually going to be using three. So once those are pulled apart, you should end up with six pieces of passion twist hair. So for this method, we are going to start off by crocheting four pieces of the passion twist hair through the top. Instead of using the thumb method, we are going to be using a pull method. So remember, it's two pieces that we pulled into four, and we're gonna put all of those through. The same thing is gonna happen. There's gonna be a shorter side that we combine with the lock and with the braid, or the twist in this case. And I'm going to still wrap around the root three to four times to secure that. Going down, I'm gonna wrap this loosely, and what's gonna happen is I'm actually going to be pulling out those little butterfly pieces. So this one I'm just wrapping lightly as I go around and Occasionally, I'm gonna pull on the lock and I'm gonna create those butterfly looking pieces. So you, this one, you really wanna make sure that you are switching in between wrapping tightly and wrapping loosely so that you have areas where you can pull those pieces out but that your lock is still also secure. This method is definitely a quicker option, but it is a little trickier. So if you are someone who is not advanced at doing locks, I definitely would not recommend this method for you. 
when you get towards the bottom, you're gonna add in that third piece of passion twist hair, and that's gonna be the last piece that you need for your lock. You're gonna literally do this the exact same way that we did it the first time. So the shorter side should combine with the faux lock hair, and you wanna make sure that you're lining that up so that it's at least around the same length, and that's gonna make sure that you know you don't have too much hair at the end of your lock. So I'm speeding up the bottom of the lock because literally everything is the exact same. You're going to tie it at a knot at the bottom and you're going to continue to wrap back up. But we are going to secure this one differently. So to secure this lock because we have a lot of hair left over, I'm going to be taking nail glue and I'm going to be placing that right where the hair, we want the hair to end. I'm going to kind of just pat that in so you don't need a lot of hair glue, just a little bit of drip and then you're just going to cut off the excess hair and that is how our lock is secured. So you guys can see that these locks do look very similar but we use two different methods to do them so yeah on to our third lock for this lock I'm actually going to be showing you guys how to do an extended faux lock so like I said these locks are 18 inches but we can make them longer a lot of locks stop at 18 inches is really hard to find them any longer than that so I'm gonna show you guys how you can extend them yourself so I'm gonna start once again by crocheting my first lock through and we're actually going to be using two locks for this method so for the second lock that i'm adding on once again i'm going to find that loop at the top of the lock and i'm going to be crocheting the bottom of the first lock through that loop How high up or down you slide that loop is going to determine how long your lock is going to continue to be. But um, I'm gonna show you guys where this is going to hang so you guys can see it's literally double the length of the locks that we just did if you keep the lock towards the bottom. So once you determine what length you want your lock to be, you're gonna take that first lock and you're gonna begin to unravel it and split it into two. going to take these two pieces, you're going to wrap it around the back and you're going to tie a knot with them and then you're going to pull them around the front and you're going to do the same exact thing. You're going to tie a knot in the front and that is literally how you secure your lock on there. It should be nice and secured and you don't have to worry about it coming off. This is not going to look perfect when you do it but that's okay because we're doing a distressed lock and so that part is going to be covered or it's going to blend in with the lock anyway. And you guys can see that that added a lot of length to our locks that we're already doing. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap those in. And you can use any method to wrap these. I believe for this length of a lock, you will need about four pieces to six pieces of passion twist hair. It really just depends on what method you use. I believe for this one, I used a total of four pieces to wrap. I'm going to speed up this wrapping just because I'm not really doing anything too different. Um, so yeah, I'll speed through this one. So here guys we have our extended lock these are perfect if you want butt length or you can even make them knee length just remember that if you're doing lengths like this you need to order double the amount of hair that you would for a regular head of hair so 
I hope you guys really enjoyed and learned something from seeing these three different methods that I use to create my locks. I really, really highly recommend this hair. It makes it very easy for you guys to achieve this look. And like I said, I'll link their information in the description section as well as pin it at the top of my comments. Make sure you guys drop a comment down below. Let me know what method you use. And if you guys found this video to be helpful, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button and click the notification bell and subscribe to my channel so that you guys can be notified every single time I post, especially when I go live because y'all know it's always a lituation. And as always, I will catch you guys in my next video. What you mean you don't know Panna? She's dope. What you mean? 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 What you mean?